Hello, Vida Nation. What's up, how guys? are you guys doing? Hey, guys, how y'all doing? We just got back from Houston yesterday, last night. We yes. were there the whole weekend. Had Correct. a great weekend. And it was so great. Like, this was the best weekend in, I'm going to say, years. Wow. Yeah, my it was life. Really good. Yeah. You know, it was, it was awesome. that great. And, um, you know, we're, we're doing this on the fly right now. Right. It is the lunch hour, and um, my husband is only home for lunch. Just got out of my suit. And got in a podcast club. Got in a real shirt. Yeah. That's correct. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, I want to tell you about a little bit about that, right? Um, I said it's the best in years. We went um, with Jay and Santoya to an MMA fight, me and yeah. my yeah, honey. Yeah, that's cool. You're going to put up a picture? And yeah. Um, yeah. we're going to, yeah, we we met uh, John Giannis, and he wants to be on the podcast. Hey, come on, um, He knows some people that are incarcerated here in Texas, and um, he would like to reach them, and he's a Christian. Um, so, that was so great. Awesome. It was yes. so fun. Um, we also saw Trey Nine, which we didn't expect yes. to do, and and ate dinner with him and met some of his staff. Oh, um, man. Oh, man. And right. Amazing. Yes. We met, we met Apollonia and it's Mario, right? Mario. Mario. We yeah. were able mm-hmm. to go to lunch with them on Sunday. And um, man, what a story, right. right? And he's done some time. So he's got some, some homies behind bars too. Right. That he and he's out. Yeah. How, how long Six ago? Six months. Know? Yeah. Oh my goodness. And you wouldn't know it. No. No. Because <laughs> he's such a godly man. He's right. such a Christian. He's so great. Um, so we got to go to church with them and yeah. we got to hear their story and go to lunch with them. And they're going to be on, on the podcast. Coming you got, soon. What day? Uh, Do you know? It's Mid-November. Mid-November. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I mean, we got a lot coming up. That was awesome. And then we went to visit Get Wrapped Church. Wow. Yeah. Um, with Pastor Juan Martinez, yes. who has This Is Real Correct. Um, on, on podcast that you guys are seeing. And I'm telling you, it's real. Yes. yes. It is real. Yes. Man. I mean, just thinking about him, I want to weep. Uh, yeah, because it was amazing. you know he is so full, and you know the Get Rap Church has started originally with like Get Rap with the love of God, blah blah. Yeah, and yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and I'm telling you, he's he's so full of love. Yeah, and, you would yeah. never know that he would had been a dealer that he had done time that, right. you know, because it's a heart condition. You know what I mean? Yes. So you can find harder hearts behind bars that have have you know done the time that have had hard life. It it like you you can't label someone from where they're at Absolutely. right now in life right. or what they're doing. There's a heart condition. Right. You yes. can be a Pharisee behind bars. You can be a loving person out here. You can be a loving person in there. You can be a Pharisee out yes. here. Like, right. Anyways, so um, we we went to church um, at Get Rap Church and uh, it was real. Yes. yes. And I loved it so much that we're going to bring it to you guys and it, it better be number one. <laughs> it deserves a number one spot. It was really good. Like everybody needs wow. to see this. Yes. Um, man, he's so great. He's funny. I've been yeah. to a lot of churches since I've been out and I've been to some good yeah. ones, some really good preachers, but this was the best church man. that I have stepped it was foot so in since cool. I've been out. And yes. what I we think went- this is one of the best churches I've ever stepped Come foot on. in. It was yeah, really, it sure really is. good. Yeah. So if you're from the Houston area and you're coming out, this is the church to go to. Yes. Hook up with Trey Nine also, who's also in Houston. I'm like he was like, man, what's going on in Houston? Yeah, like right. they got Dude, so much great yeah. stuff. I, I thought about it this morning, and you know, uh, in the natural realm, there always develops financial centers, like a certain city, whether it's a port right. or right on the coast, right. and, and it becomes a really like rich city. Yeah, and I was thinking, there's something about Houston My that's like goodness. a a spiritual riches center. It's like right. it's gravitating all man. this spiritual power there, and so it's really cool uh, to see what's happening. You know, he has a book, which we've got up on the table. I yes. haven't been able to read it, read it yet, but I, and I don't usually put a book up that I haven't read yet, but um, I know he's so real. I know this book is good. We already read his book. Yeah. And yeah, so it's, it's there and we'll, we'll talk about more of that on other, another podcast. Um, what else? Um, what else? Oh, I got my cup and I wanted to show you my cup because I'm so proud of it and I love it. <laughs> um, and this is like the cup that I lost. Um, and that's why I was so brokenhearted because someone made it for me and sent it to yeah. me and look how beautiful it is. It is. And Amazing. I love the color hold, and, hold it up again. and the I gold, yeah. you know, and then we put our gold, right? And um, Real Vida Por right. Vida. That, 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 the first cup was the reason why we went from the yellow mic to the gold mic. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Yeah. And so, um, and, and let me read the little, there's a little letter that came with it. It said, Real Vida Eve, my name is JR. I saw the podcast where you explained how you lost your cup <laughs> and I had did it for you. Of course, I knew I had to replace your cup. Thank oh. you so much. Oh, that's cool. Plus, Flo told me about the podcast episode explaining the lost cup. He gave me the look like, you know what you got to do. <laughs> so, I 
got on the cup right away, oh. sending the cups and keychains because they make keychains yes. too, really yeah, nice they ones. Were cool. yeah. Was off Flo's idea in the first place. He did a great job on the other cups and also designing the keychains. So shout out to Flo. Yes. Yeah. And shout out to the rest of the Robertson Unit craft shop. Awesome. But guys. listen, Man. Linda. But listen, Linda, he said, I can't afford to keep replacing your cup <laughs> when you lose it. So try to make this one last a little longer this time. Just kidding. I hope you like it. Thank you for all you guys do. Keep shining. Yeah. Um, thank you so much yeah. for my cup. And I, I did learn my lesson. This yeah. one's not going to a restaurant. Yeah. This stays at home. So, and and uh, just a question. So if there are people watching us in the free world and they wanted mm -hmm. a cup like that, he could make it for him, right? He could make it for him, but I don't think we have that, that information. They just have to get, get a hold of the Robertson Craft Shop, I, I believe. Wow. Okay. Okay. And, and wow. if, you know, if we can get other information then um, on how he, they can make a cup, right? Yeah. For them. That's, your, that's really good work. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. It's like, you know, when you get your brand new car. Yeah. That's how it looks, that shine. Yeah, it really right? does. And I think they'd use some yeah. sort of automotive thing, he said, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. That's so cool. it's a special, special cup. And yeah. I love it so much. So thank you so much for making Linda another cup. Because <laughs> I, I love it. My heart was so People broken. People are going to start calling you Linda now. They do. They already do. They already yeah. do. They're like, yeah. always like, listen, Linda, right? So yeah. um, in the next few... Um, podcast, I think the next podcast, there's a subject that we've been wanting to talk about. Um, do I, I do want to mention... Don't miss it, you guys. It's not all that glitters is gold. And um and 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 I know you know that, but as Christians, you're gonna have to know that. Right. And I I kind of didn't want I don't want you to know <laughs> in a way, I don't want the new ones to know the bad things that go on, but they actually do anyway. Right. 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 You know, people are like, um, I don't want to give my life to God because there's too many hypocrites and because I don't want to be a hypocrite. And right. those were my two reasons. Yeah. When I didn't give my life to God for a long, long time, I was like, I don't know if I can live it and I don't want to be a hypocrite. And there are so many. And we talked about wearing the jersey, right? That yeah. um, just because someone doesn't wear the jersey right and they're a drunken fool of the, you know, Rangers right. or whoever you like, because, you know, they just went to the Rangers yeah. this week. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean you stop liking the Rangers because somebody's representing wrong. Right. right. And so that's how it is with God, you know, and there are a lot of people, of course, the strategy of the enemy, right? Yeah. So, you know, the enemy comes and he tries to knock you out with all these different situations with, you know, people that are worldly people. And if you're strong enough to endure all that and he can't get you, then usually what he does is he brings an inside job. Yeah, right. that's right. And an inside job in the Lord is somebody who claims to be a Christian, even a minister, and begins to talk about you or um, let, let, let me read just one scripture in Jeremiah chapter 18. This is what happened to Jeremiah. He's preaching the truth and, and it's not worldly people that don't like him. It's the church. Yeah. Right? So look what they say. Yeah. And in chapter 18 and verse 18, then the people say, come on, let's plot a way to stop Jeremiah. We have plenty of priests and wise men and prophets. We don't need him teaching the word and giving us advice and prophecies. Let's spread rumors about him wow. and ignore what he says. So this happens, and I know it happens to you guys in there. Um, yeah. You know, there's a, a real Christian or whatever, field minister or or whatever, a Christian, wherever you're at, Seger, um, you know, G4, 5, and and somebody don't like it or they're jealous of you, of, you know, people paying attention to you or liking you, um, you know, whatever that is. And they begin to spread rumors. They begin to try to divide and like, you know what he said about you? Man, did you see the way he looked at you? Like, and you're like, what? No, I thought he was my friend. And like planting seeds. Yeah, right. they yeah. begin to plant seeds. Right. Yeah. And so that is what happens, unfortunately. And it just shows the immaturity of that person, right. you know, um, but it can cause a lot of damage. And so um, we're going to talk about that. I told my husband several weeks ago, you know, we, we need to address this because we want them to know that it's not just in there that this happens or if right. they're, a new belie they're a new believer. When I was a new believer, even though I was I had raised in church, I thought that all Christians, especially ministers, were pure. That, you know, they didn't gossip. They didn't lie. They didn't, you know. Right. I, I, I That's what I thought. And I was so shocked. And it almost knocked me out of the game, you know, um, be, when I found out that there were so many um, that were not real. Um, so let me read this other scripture. And this is also in Jeremiah. It's the message version, but you know how that is. <laughs> message version is so great. And it says the heart is hope, hopelessly dark and deceitful. Mm. And it's especially in jealousy. When someone is jealous, the Bible says where jealousy is, there's every other evil work. Right. right. It's the spirit of witchcraft. And so they will do anything, that spirit of jealousy, 
um, people will do anything behind that, including murder, right? right. And so in murdering spiritually and murdering your reputation and murdering, you know, taking something you said and twisting it or whatever it is, right? Yeah. So it says the heart is hopelessly dark and deceitful and without God and a great hold of God, we're all capable of that. Right. Yeah. Right. A puzzle that no one can figure out. They're like, why did they do that? Why would they say that? Why would they, you know, but I, God, search the heart and examine the mind. Mm. I get to the heart of the human. I get to the root of things. I treat them as they really are, not as they pretend to be. Right. And so we're going to talk a little more about that. Y'all know it anyway. We're going to show you what the scripture says about it and what are the common things that happen in the body of Christ, which is so painful. Like David David said, he said, you know, if it would have been my enemy that raised their heel against me, I understand that. I get that. But it was my brother. Yeah. It's, it, it's the one that I ate with, man. It's the one that I walked with. It's the one we're supposed to be on the same team, on the same side. And you know, that's why a lot of teams don't make it. Um, right. You know, whether it's a football team or a basketball team or whatever, there's, you know, somebody who's really making the shots or whatever, and somebody on the team gets mad. Right. right. On their own team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they begin to start rumors. Ego. They begin to start yeah. division. They begin to compete against them. And instead of throwing, you know, throwing the ball to them, now they're keeping the ball to themselves because I ain't going to give you the ball, oh, right? right? When yeah. it's when when the wisest thing to do is what's best for the team, yeah, you know. And so that happens in the yeah. Lord. Unfortunately, that happens, and I, I wish it didn't, um, but it does. But we have to be aware of it. Otherwise, you're going to be so hurt when you do see it happen that you're not going to know what to do. So Yeah, I was just going to share real quick along those lines. Uh, it was so cool getting to meet Pastor Juan Martinez, who you're oh, about man. to see in a few minutes this yes. weekend. And we knew that God was directing us to go yes. and make a spiritual covenant a relationship wow. uh, with this man of God. And um, we didn't even know exactly why we were going. We knew just God said to go. Um Psalm 133 verse one says, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. And I just tell you, uh, we met Pastor Juan and his wife, Ruthie, and their team, and they have an amazing team there at Get Wrapped Church. And and in fact, not just when you get out, but if you have family members, loved ones, friends in the Houston area that don't have a place where they're really plugged in, send them there. strongly recommend that church. And so immediately when we met them, we felt like this is family. These are are people, this isn't just an acquaintance I'm going to have. This is somebody I'm going to do life and ministry with. And so anyway, it like was so Like if we cool. were there, we would attend that church. Yes. That's 100%. Uh-huh. 100%. And so, um, you know, we knew that God was giving us this message of unity to begin teaching. But my wife and I realized the night before we went to visit with him and really get to know him for the first time at church. Yeah. God isn't just having us teach about unity. Jesus always did uh, tell and show. He would tell and then he would demonstrate demonstrate with a parable or with his life. Life. Let's live this. And so we knew God is saying, not just talk about unity, demonstrate unity by going and working together. And so I want to share this scripture and an example God gave me. Uh, In Philippians 2, 1, it says, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? that make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. And don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. And the example that God gave me uh, was, you know, I think people have this worldly mindset about competition. Okay, so, and I told Pastor Juan, you know, you do prison ministry, we do prison ministry. You're a pastor. We've been pastoring for years. Uh, You know, you've got a podcast. We've got a podcast. So people think because of a fleshly, worldly way of thinking that we got to be in competition with each other. Right. Not so. Of course not. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, what I thought about, this is not NASCAR where he's got a car and we've got a car. We're both racing, racing for the finish line to see who gets there first. Right. What God showed me is it's like a pit crew, and and Chris is going to put up a pit crew, and a pit crew in NASCAR usually takes about 15 seconds. The best one ever was 8.7 seconds. It's so fast, and everybody's working together in unity for one purpose, and that's to get the car back out on the track to win the race. And one person may have the job, okay, you fill it with gas. The other person maybe check the tires for air or replace the tires. Somebody check the engine, check the oil. Everybody's got a job, a different job, and it's all essential. 
essential to yeah. getting the car back out on the road. Uh, and so that's what we're doing here. Right. And yeah. that's why today we're going to put up the service right. that we were at. Yes. It, because I said, I said, Pastor Juan, if you're not going to put that up, send it to me and I'll pay yeah. to set it, put it up <laughs> yeah. because it's that good. And right. I, I need everyone incarcerated right. to see it because it is that good. It's really and good. so, um, you know, he does, he said he does four podcasts for church services. So I don't think it was going to go up, but it's going to go up because yeah. we're going to put it up <laughs> um, because I don't, these, everybody needs to see this. Right. It yes. is that great because we're not here to promote Real Vida, right? right. Ministry. We're here to promote Jesus That's and the correct. kingdom come of on, God. Come on. And so whoever that, you know, in the Bible, when they were going to battle, right, they would say, who do we send first? Right. Who should lead this battle, Father? Right. Yeah. And it's like when we go as a group to units, um, whether, you know, it's Carl or my husband. My husband does most of the speaking when we go, me, him, and Sam, um, in the units. Um, podcast, I do most of the leading because he can't because right. he's working and I, I work all day and all night. Right. On, on the podcast and it's what God called me to do. Um, so we have our different things that we lead, but we're supporting who, whoever is leading, right. you know, because it's not about who's leading. It's about who can reach, who's, right. who did God say put in front of this thing to win this battle? Yeah. Yeah. And so for today, it yeah. is Juan Martinez yeah. with, right. um, yeah. um, you know, this is real yeah. with real Vida combined. We're going to punch the yeah. devil yeah. in yeah. the mouth. The Wonder Twin Power yeah. today. I really, I really Amen? do like the, 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 uh, analogy of a pit crew, especially in this sense with us and Juan, because, you know, the pit crew, they, they got four tires to change and there's yeah. four sets of people changing tires. Yes. And that, you know, this guy yeah. who's changing the front left tire is not sitting there saying, you know, there's no time for him to get back over to that other one. Right. Yeah. There's somebody else over there changing right. that tire. Right. You know, the same way we got, we you know, got, we're, we're all working together and it's like, you know, we're trying to get this done the best yes. we can and we encourage them. They encourage us. It was so great. Talking you know, it's to like Juan. when, I when mean, somebody's up on the stage, like when we went, we just went to Calvary Commission and ministered, right? So if my honey's up on the stage and um, he's unaware, I promise you, of everything that's right beside him. <laughs> and so the mic stands right behind him. I'm like, go move that, Chris, or I'll go yeah. move it myself because I know he's going to step on it and trip or something or knock it over. Um, you it's know, true. and so, you know what I'm saying? So right. I'm watching yeah. about when, when Sam's up there, you know, go get her this mic. That mic's not loud enough. The battery's about to go out mm. or whatever. I'm watching for, okay, I'm the pit crew of, of what's going on so I can make her time the easiest and the best, yes, you know, and most I most effective. Yeah. Yes. You know, so that we don't get interruptions. So we don't have those things going on. And, you know, what can we do to facilitate right. this? That, that kid is screaming, you know, in the service, let me go try to carry it and get it out of service. Even though I want to hear so bad, right. um, I want the other people to hear more. Yes. So I'm going to, I'm going to go out with the child. So, you know, we've got to do that. And, um, and I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm honored actually to be able to do that today and put this service up with Juan Martinez, it, it it's it's life changing, and so um, it's so great. So yeah. um so here it is. God bless you, and we'll see you in a couple of days where we will share with you. Hey, this is Pastor Juan Martinez, and I want to thank you for choosing to watch Get Rap Church on the Pando app. And so we were talking about deliverance. I want you to know because I want you to see something here, and then I'm going to share my testimony. Isaiah sixty one one because the the. The Lord Jesus gave to his church this deliverance thing, everything about. This is part of Jesus' message, and you're going to see it in Isaiah. It says, the Spirit of the Lord is, of God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and freedom to the prisoners. That's some good stuff. I'm glad, because, you know, that he healed me, because I was broken. I'm glad that he set me free, and I'm glad that Jesus is just amazing in everything that he does, and so therefore, all I have to do is follow him, and I wind up in this verse. I want to show you something that deliverance, the only aspect of ministry that the Lord cautioned his disciples was deliverance, okay? Luke 10, 17 through 20, let me read this to you. I'm going to read it in the easy to read version easy to read when the 72 followers came back from their trip they were very happy now jesus sent them out you know they're gonna go cast out some demons come on they said lord even the demons obeyed us when we use your name you know they're like Woo man that was fire he's like we came back demons listened they're excited right <laughs> and then he says i've and so he says uh he is the enemy. Oh, no. Jesus said to them, 
you know, they're really excited. He said, I saw Satan falling like lightning from the sky. I think he's saying, dude, you're really excited. He's already defeated. He is the enemy, but know that I have given you more power than he has. I have given you more power to crush his snakes and scorpions. Now, don't go pick up snakes and scorpions. This is, he's really using this as an example, people. There's people out there that slither like snakes and hide, but yet are dangerous. And then there's scorpions who, who are like poison, poisonous people, right? They're under your feet. Nothing will hurt you. Yes, even the spirits obey you and you can be happy, not because you have this power, right? Because we're super excited. And again, I understand the authority and the power and I love that too. But I want you to see what Jesus says. He says, not because you have the power, but because your names are written in heaven. So Jesus didn't tell him not to do it. He just told him to have the proper perspective. Now you could argue with me all day long, but I would rather you argue with Luke. <laughs> We're like the early disciples today. We, we get really excited about all those things. What we don't get excited about if somebody comes, man, I led somebody to the Lord. We don't even hear that. We don't even hear that that much. And we wait for events. Right? I, I, I usually don't, you know, post or share. I think I'm going to do the post later. But this weekend, I just, thinking about my testimony and all how God has done, it compelled me to do some things. So I just started cleaning up and picking up some bags of clothes. And, you know, for some of you that know me, know me, you know, I have this little thing when it comes to so many pairs of shoes. I give one away. There's all these little things I do. But this weekend, whoa, I was like floored because I'm like, God, you've been so good to me. I want to give it up. You know what I'm saying? And so I, had, I just was led by the Lord, and I wind up meeting this guy named Chris after about an hour of driving around. So I'm, I'm, I go, I look at all these people. The Lord doesn't show me. I'm like, Lord, I'm going home. And then he shows me this guy named Chris. And so I go, hey, I'm going around. I go around. I start talking to Chris. I show him that I had needle marks in my arms, and I showed him a picture, you know. Um, show him that picture real quick. Yeah, right there. That guy got shot in the head. All right, so... You know, I show him this picture, and I'm like, yo, I was real jacked up. Because he's about to give me the whole manipulative conversation, right? And that's the point where I was at my worst. You know, I was still selling drugs, doing all this stuff, and I was so blinded because I thought that money and all that, you know, I couldn't see that. I saw myself, like, handsome. <laughs> I had a vehicle. I had houses everywhere. I had all these things. So things acclimated. I felt blessed. I had things, I was just losing my life. And some of y'all look like that in the spirit. But anyway. <laughs> They're like, ah. <laughs> and so what winds up happening, I mean, Chris, before you know it, man, he's excited. And I, you know, I, I'm like, man, this is what it's about. And then all of a sudden, we, we're talking to this girl. We wind up going to, uh, I forgot the name of the restaurant, Cats. And so, I, you know, I'm talking and I felt like I hear the Lord again. It was like a Lord weekend. It was awesome. And so I hear the Lord, and he's like, yeah, you're going to talk to this girl. Her name is Jessica. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm like, babe, I feel like you have a prophetic word for her. And so I felt like the Lord told me to do something. So, I, you know, I do this. I read it in the Blessed Life where Pastor Robert keeps 100 bucks, and he goes around the land and whoever the Lord, you know, and so I do that. I read a book. I see it true. I see fruit. I do it. <laughs> At first, I think I couldn't do it. I was like, how am I going to do that? But then I decided, ah, I could do it. And so I... I, I, I go and I give her, she's like, no, 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 no. You know, she's got her little thing. She's got a little piercing and everything. She's like all chilling, super cool. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the Lord hits her, boom! Right? I go like, yo, don't look at the thing. I said, the creator of your universe, stop time to talk to you. This is not, forget about the paper. This has no value. Value is what God's telling you. And then she, she takes it, and then all of a sudden, I know what he wants me to do. I know what he I said, whoa, what the heck? Before you know it, the whole restaurant walks up to her, and they're all like, are you okay? <laughs> Ruthie's like starts, she turns the, the whole, she goes from all cute and sensitive to, the Lord is saying that you will. I'm like, what the heck is happening? <laughs> I'm like, yo, boom. Oh, man, the whole restaurant is like, we leave, and they're all still talking, looking out the window, like, what just happened? And so we... I'm sharing this testimony because God wants to do the same thing with you. I'm sharing the story because God wants you to see that it's not crazy, it's God. And what's impossible for man is, is, not, is possible with God. Deliverance is about the whole process of salvation. That 
it, it, you have to understand that we need deliverance because of sin and, and it's a past thing right he did it all at the cross right some of us the reason why we still working over here and we blame everything is because we don't understand Romans 6 and if you get some time go home read Romans 6 and that'll tell you exactly what Jesus has done and so you're supposed to be dead to sin and alive to God but some of y'all want to keep playing with sin and then you want to find theology that fits your mess so you could blame everything but the reality is that you don't know what he's done and so you live off of present and going to heaven you're like present and going to heaven. Wow, I'm having all these fights. You're having all these fights because you haven't, you're not living Romans 6. Oh, I did that a lot too. I just felt good. <laughs> <laughs> Testimony is when a person is brought into a courtroom and placed under oath to tell, to attest to, or to give witness to his or her personal knowledge or experience with the reference to the case that is being heard. Today, the thing on trial is Jesus real. That's what's on trial, and you can't be a witness. Listen, I know enough courtrooms. I, I wholeheartedly feel that you're going to get up there, and, be, and some of us are going to be like, hey, you know, I know Jesus, and somebody's going to jump up and go, that's hearsay, because that's what happens in the courtroom. If it wasn't real and you weren't there, then it's hearsay. But if you're a Christian, and you, you've been forgiven for your sins, and you've accepted that you had died with him and resurrected with him, and now you're alive, then you can testify of the goodness of God. And this is my testimony. When I was a kid, I grew up in Hoboken, Puerto Rican. Mom did the best she could. Father walked out, eight years old, beat up, adultery. Um, had my mom by the hair, you know, before you know it. I, I never really saw a godly man, never really wanted to go to church. Churches was something you did on Sunday. It wasn't who you were. And uh, my mom, she says, never let somebody put hands on you. And we walk out. Last time, really saw my father. I see my father, but last time I saw him like that. I ended up um, until 12, man. I loved baseball. I had favor on my life. Come on. I, what, the first year I played this for this team called Rottendella. Brown t-shirt, brown hat. Whack. <laughs> Rottendella plumbing. And so it's me. Little skinny Puerto Rican kid that looked white, and everybody from the projects. <laughs> and so that first year, man, whoo, Rotten Della, we were in last place. Sucked. <laughs> Strike three. <laughs> Strike three. <laughs> and so I wind up that next year really putting some emphasis into it, and what winds up happening is from that time all the way to high school we won every single championship uh, I've been in championship games more than I you know count I lost everything because I was getting high and all that so all of those memories kind of got lost in a storage don't know if that ever happened to you but it did happen to me so I have no recollection of most of those things but uh, you know I'm doing good till 12 at 13 years old you know my mom never really let me go outside at all so they started, you know, name calling Mama's boy. And so, you know, I wasn't black enough. And then I wasn't Puerto Rican enough. So I had to make my own way. I was going to be black enough and Puerto Rican enough. <laughs> and white enough wherever I set foot. I was like the drug dealer that I sold to everybody, you know. And so at 13, you know, I uh, wind up, don't run if it's your first time here. You're like, oh, my God, he's a drug dealer. <laughs> I uh, wind up, you know, selling masculine and all this stuff. I start, I get introduced to cocaine. 14 years old, I'm already selling in multiple schools in New Jersey. And I'm um, just destroying lives. They didn't have a father, so, you know, I was very rebellious. You know, my will wasn't broken. I did whatever I wanted to do. And the funny thing is that most of the time, we think that all that stuff is cool and that when parents advise you against it, or today I'm telling you, hey, what you're doing today, you're going to reap tomorrow. Even for my adult parents, well, I'm going to be fine. You keep doing it. You're not going to be, I mean, you know what it is. What you got today is what you sowed here. I don't like my life today. Well, then stop sowing that. <laughs> it's like I hate tomatoes. You got a garden, but you plant it. <laughs> it's almost like we don't think this part's coming. It's coming. 
And so what winds up happening is, man, is I'm, I'm a lonely kid too, so I'm, I don't have brothers and sisters. So I, the people that I meet, I meet Mike Reyes. He's like my Dominican pit bull. Oh, oh, me dice el diablo. Eh, cuál es la vaina, loco? And so, uh, you know, he was real cool and uh, real fun. He just could fight. And so he was like, one day I was going to get bullied. Boom, he goes to hit this dude with a bat, and we became best friends. We start walking, and we walk, and we play on every team since 13 all the way through high school. And at that time, I felt like, you know, I'm going to take care of everybody because that's what the video showed me, Scarface, everybody. So, you know, I winded up becoming the loudest, right, even if I was super afraid because I really wasn't like, you know, my mom's nice, and I was a little kid, you know. But since this, it's either eat or get eaten, so I had to become something that I really wasn't. And so, you know, when I was hanging out with them, man, I felt accepted. Come on. They gave me identity. Hey, come on, I felt secure. Come on, I had purpose. But all out of a lie. Isn't it funny that you need those things with truth? And so they gave me identity. They told me I was somebody. Come on, I had purpose. I was going to run the streets. I was going to have a tiger. And so, and I believed those things. I believed them so much that I started taking over those high schools. I tried to get away, join the military. That really didn't work because now I had a uniform. And so I would stand on the block. I remember going home and I would have this uniform on, you know, military. And they would take everybody else and like, you know, turn around, da 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 And there was you. I'm like, United States Navy, CBN 65, USS uh, Enterprise. And I'm, I'm be touring soon, sir. And they'd be like, all right, they just go to the other guys, and now I get to hold all the drugs and all the guns because they were going to just pass right by me. And then that was dangerous because now I had a license. I would drive all the time. Now I'm all over the place with my uniform on. He's smiling like he did the same thing. <laughs> this, this is when you know you got a good <laughs> And so all of a sudden, boom, I'm doing all that. Now, rest assured, I have three children. Well, I have six children. But at this time, I had three. Well, I have uh, Jay when I was in high school, getting out of high school. Uh, the person I had the child with, she was still in high school. And then I winded up having uh, Jonathan, uh, Nina, and then Jonathan. Yeah. Pretty oh, the other way around. Yeah, the other way around. Yeah. So, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jonathan and then Nina, right? And so all of them... Um, it's because I kept doing the same thing, expecting a different result. I really didn't know how to be a father. I didn't know how to do any of these things, but I was operating out of a lie. So, you know, um, I wind up having him through the context of time. I kept trying to escape to places or change scenarios because I thought that if I would change a job or change a woman or change a state or change a church or change a, that I would become a different person. And the reality is, uh, you are who you are no matter where you go. You can't run away from you. Look. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> I know that's not, that looked, I just thought, why not, right? I mean, it is, you did catch it, right? Like, watch, I'm going to leave me here. <laughs> and so some of you are trying to run from things that you actually should confront because you have Jesus Christ in your life. And so you keep doing the same thing over and over again. So in that journey, I wind up saying, you know what? I'm going to uh, take over the world. I'm going to take over the world. I said, you know, because I was going to Manhattan, you know, a lot of crazy stuff. I've been in about 11 gun incidents. Uh, first gun placed in my mouth to my temple, chest. That's when we were wearing gooses. Y'all don't know nothing about that. And the fur, you know. <laughs> And so, uh, you know, bubble goose is like that, you know, all the colors, you know. I had a dog one day jump and bit my goose. And so anyway, that's another story. But. And so I have all these crazy stories of all these things, right? I mean, I'm partying too. All those clubs, Studio 54, Hawthrop, Palladium that you kind of see in Netflix, I was in those clubs selling drugs. Me and John Ramirez, you know, we, we, we talk about it. He was at the same year, the same thing. So I was like, wow, we probably walk like this and never even know each other. Because the lie that you're living is, cause, is a cause and effect to destroying the other people's lives, even though you don't see it. It's the Netflix movie we're going to do. 
And so what winds up happening is that, man, I'm in all these clubs. I think life is one big party. Why? Because I was Puerto Rican, and in my culture, everything was a party. Everything was a party. Columbus Day party. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> you got an A, there was a party. You got a B, you got a C. It doesn't matter. We're throwing a party. <laughs> That's just how we lived. You know, I have these children, I'm not being a dad. It wasn't that I couldn't be a dad. Some of y'all, I mean, I didn't go to church. And why would I? My dad didn't want to go to church. My mom was like forcing me to go to church. And, and everybody in my family was partying. These dudes are selling bricks. This dude's, uh, you know, got a prostitution thing. They're all going to church. Nobody's life was changing. Everybody was getting divorced. Everybody was this. So I'm like, I'm like, these guys in the street, they look happy. They had lots of women, <laughs> you know. They had lots of drugs, lots of money, lots of everything was happy. They were always happy. It looked that way even though they were being deceived. These people just didn't know Jesus. They had a form of godliness denying the power thereof, and there was a lot of religion. Everything is about transformation. You saw the picture. Ta-da. I'm not just preaching to you out of something I heard a reel on Instagram and then parrot to you what they said and then your life still looks jacked up. That makes no sense to me. That's false or immature. I mean, not attributed to false, it's just immature. And I never understood people that have been in church their whole life and don't love their wives. I, I don't get it. I'm like, you're supposed to love everybody, but the person right in front of you, you don't? It makes no sense to me. I understand when I was high. At least I had an excuse. It was a bad excuse, but I had one. Some people have been in church their whole lives. Some of them don't even have my story and yet still struggle with deny, denying themselves, crucifying their flesh. I saw myself coming to this Sunday service and go, I'm struggling! That was Saturday. So all of that is what's happened throughout my life. I wind up said, I'm going to go to Texas. I'm going to take over the world. I wind up going to McAllen, Texas. Donna, I wind up going over the border, meet the ninth, the ninth guy. And I don't have a lot of pictures. I don't want to glorify a lot of those things, right, because it looks super cool. But my life was just getting worse and worse, and I was digging, digging a deeper ditch and a deeper ditch, and I felt alone, and I felt like I had nobody. And it was, everything was just, well, I could do this on my own. Now all of a sudden I'm on pride all the way to the top. I go, I'm selling drugs everywhere. I get extradited back. I, I'm sitting with a guy like Con Air, and I'm, I'm the, probably the lowest charge there, and everybody else got these big charges, you know, millions here, millions there. I'm like this little charge. I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm doing. And so I'm sitting next to the guy, and we're shackled, right? Because you're shackled with each other. You know, one guy's got to go in the bathroom while you hold the door, and then you switch. Don't know if you guys ever had to do that, so I learned how to eat cheeseburgers and everything, like on timing. <laughs> so you learn all these cool tricks that you don't want to. I learned how to go to the bathroom. I'm telling you, one, <laughs> it's, it's very interesting, but you make it happen. <laughs> You would think of all these things, and this guy tells me, Yo, you want to make a lot of money, 506 West 6th Street, Breckenridge, Texas, 76424. I've never forgotten it. It's ingrained in my heart. That address he gave me was to take over the planet. So I, I, I go back, 18 days, you know, beard is long. I'm like, somebody give me a pencil. I write it down. Boom, all of a sudden, you know, uh, they give me a pencil. I write it down. I start writing, and all of a sudden, I'm back in Texas, and I'm supposed to meet this guy, big big drug deal, all this stuff's about to happen, but I get introduced to methamphetamines because you say you'll never do something, but all of a sudden you're in the right place, the right time with the wrong person, boom, you're done. So you say you'll never do these things. Everybody that says, well, listen, I've never been, and like, let me tell you, I used to give advice. I had a prostitution house. This is all stuff that has happened in between. And so I used to give them advice. I was shepherding then. I just didn't know what to tell them. You know, I'd be like, here, yeah, yeah, you should go back to your kids. It's not good. They're true stories. And never have I met someone to say, you know what? 
I want to be, when I grow up, a crack addict, and I want to just ruin everything. I want to be a bad parent. That's exactly what I want to be. You know what? I, I, I want to be a jacked up brother. Or, you know, I just, you know, I'm just really hoping that in 10 years I can start doing heroin, leave my kids, and not do any of that. You know what? I really want to have a dad. You know, because a lot of times we wind up with all these excuses because of your past, and I get your past. But at some point, you got to make a decision to say, hey, you know what? That's what happened there, but the buck stops with me. Like, this is where it stops. <laughs> or you're just going to stay there, beating yourself up, having excuses, giving the enemy this much credit and God this much credit. I've never just thought about it. I never, I, I, I don't know. I just don't think that way. I wind up, you know, coming. Before you know it, I get introduced to meth. I start shooting up. Just in case those are like, oh, he was just sold drugs and smoked pot. No, I winded up shooting up. The picture you saw there, all of this is black because that's how much water depleted from my body. But hey, I'm doing great because I got houses and I got money and I got... Kids still didn't hear from me. Some of you ain't even high. Your kids don't hear from you. But anyway. Some of you have been in church for a long time and you're not experiencing the very freedom that I'm trying to convey to you this morning. Amen. This isn't, here's the thing. We didn't go like, hey, we're going to, let me, let me, let me back up before. So I wind up, let me get saved and then, you know, we'll wind up here. So I wind up going to prison, 25 years I'm facing. I, I, get on the ground in Weatherford, Texas. Get on the ground, aggravated robbery. I'm like, aggravated robbery? In my head, I'm thinking, I'm a drug dealer. I send people to go do that, <laughs> which is kind of what happened to me. I wind up, you know, there's the people behind the mirror, all the detectives. They're from Breckenridge. I'm, you know, they said, hey, let me put you on a lie detector test. So I, no, I tell them, give me a lie detector test because I know I didn't aggravate rob nobody. <laughs> but they gave him my name, and so I sit there, and then he, the guy goes, yeah, listen, you want me to help you? And I go, well, yes. And I, I'm telling them the story, but this is, how, this is how they are. They're pretty slick. They go, all right, so you, you were high. You walked in. You hit him in the head. He went down. I'm like, that's not the story I gave you. I go, no, that's not what happened. He said, okay, okay, let's try it again. So I would do it again, and then he would tell me that again. All right, you want me to help you or not? I'm like, yes, help me. He said, okay, so you hit the guy in the head because you were on meth. And I'm like, no, I'm, I sell drugs. I don't do that. I wind up confessing. I don't do that. I go, yo, I pay people. I pay people to hit people. I say, I ain't messing, you hunt, and you know, back then, prideful, right? So I ain't messing these up. And then they're like, oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> so, so, so I wind up going to, uh, you know, Weatherford, Texas. I'm locked up. You know, I, um, you know, uh, I, I, before you know it, you know, I wind up with this guy, and he says that he's there for me and that he's a pastor, and I don't really know who he is, and I don't really remember his name. And usually God thinks I always remember. My beautiful wife believes that he's an angel because I, I don't, I remember lots of things, especially something like that. And he tells me, you know, because there's a lot of people God sends to you, and you don't listen to them. But this, this time, this guy, he says to me, uh, hey, you know, I'm a pastor. I go, man, what are you doing locked up? Why are you locked up? You're a pastor. He's like, well, and I only knew priest, bald head guy, little stomach, boom. You know, I didn't know like pastor. I just knew Catholic church, right? So he goes, I go, you ain't here for me, whatever. And I go into my cell and I'm thinking about it because two time, two, these two things happened right before that. One of them was my last gun incident. You know, I'm full of blood. They beat me for like 30 minutes, head of the blood, long story consolidating lady starts screaming I'm full of blood you know when I when I was laying on the floor and he was beating me I hear the and then I, I think I'm gonna die but I don't know how to be like God da -da -da, you know so I I only know our father so I yelled this is the day I believe that my cry I believe I got saved that day I know some of y'all uh, might not be like well he didn't there was no worship team there and there was no <laughs> the, but I said our father who are in heaven Hallow be thy name, you know, clinching for the shot, right? Because I'm thinking, hallow be that, you know. <laughs> it's really what I'm thinking. So I'm, I'm just clenching, and I'm like, ah, da, da, da. and then all of a sudden, mm. And so I get up. I have nothing, no shoes, no money. You know, they took everything. But I have my life. And so I, I knew it was bad when I turned to the side, and the girl just started screaming. 
ha, ha. I'm like, what? And I look down, and there's nothing but blood, right? So my head's out here. And I still went to go get high, the insanity. I'm like, call this guy. I need to get high. I'm like bleeding out. I'm like bleeding out. I'm still thinking of getting high. My Carol Vance boys. And so all of a sudden, fast forward. Oh, the other one was I was sitting in a car and I was looking at the clouds. And this has never happened to me. And since like 23, 24, all the way to 36, I could count on these two hands how often I was sober. I was always high. Every day. Woke up high, went to sleep high. Sometimes I didn't sleep. Seven days, three days, 11 days, depends what happened. Depends if my friend got shot in his head, smiley. I was on dope and meth for about seven to 11 days. Pastor Juan, you're like, man, Pastor Juan? And I'm alive. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I, I'm in the car. I feel like the clouds are talking to me. I know you're going to think I'm crazy. And remember, I, wasn't, I had a preface that I wasn't high. So I'm looking at the clouds, and I, and I hear this. I just start crying. Like if I got baptized with the Holy Spirit. I was reading a letter Ruthie wrote me while I was in prison yesterday. It was like 2009. And it's like, I'm so happy you got baptized by the Holy Spirit. You're now going to see with new eyes. And I just fell apart. Because I remember when that happened. When this time it was the same kind of experience. I just didn't know the Bible. I didn't know rata, ba, 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 no, none of that. So I, I, I hear why you're killing, stealing, and destroying the very lives I'm giving people. And so all of a sudden it kind of went away. I stopped crying. All of a sudden I'm back to normal. It was like somebody turned off a faucet. And now, she, you know, because she was like, yo, we're going to get locked up. You know? That's what it sounded like when that was happening. But then all of a sudden it was like, we're going to get locked up. I'm like, what the? Because I have a bunch of meth, and now I'm delivering meth, and God's like, you're turning uh, teachers into prostitutes, you know, all that. I used to sell to dentists, doctors, you name it. So, yeah, some people were dent. I was like, wigging out. I'm like, you smoke crack, you're a dentist. Whoa. <laughs> and so now, all of a sudden, all of this is happening because, remember, I'm in prison. I was giving you the two things that happened, and then this is happening, and now, all of a sudden, he got me thinking. And some of y'all should be thinking right now. One thing happened, and you thought it was just the thing that happened. No, God was trying to get your attention. Something else happened, and God was trying to get your attention. Something else is happening, and God's trying to get your attention. And at this third time, I'm sitting there in the cell, and I'm like, nah. So I go in the morning, I'm going to talk to this guy, because now God's got my attention. I, I, I don't know what it sounds like. I don't know what, you know, I would tell everybody, hey, you know, I think God's talking to me. And they would be like, man, New York, you high. I'm like, no, I'm really not. Like, I really feel like he's talking to me. And so this guy, I, I try to talk to him, but he's laying like this on a gray blanket. He's always been locked up. You know what blanket I'm talking about? <laughs> Cuts a little off, gray, a little woolly, itchy. <laughs> gray blanket, right? And uh, he's laying on that joker. And you know, I'm thinking to myself, all right, he's going to get up. And so he don't get up. So I'm like, hmm, what's he doing? So I go, let me go work out. I work out. I make a, make a soup. Shout out to ramen noodle. And so, you know, I do... <laughs> I make my little soup, add my little thing, you know, because you're a chef. You do that. We're doing this way before that guy. <laughs> you know, whatever. Boom. we chefs in there. We're some good chefs. But anyway, that's my own perspective. It was with ramen. but <laughs> And so all of these soups, you know, that restaurant ramen, I got to just throw this in there because we, we used to always talk about opening a restaurant with ramen, and they did it. <laughs> we should get credit for that. But anyway, so... You know, I'm doing this thing. He's still laying there. I, I go work out. He's still laying there. I take a shower. He's still laying there. I finally go. He finally gets up. It's like an hour later, and I'm like tripping out because I'm like, what were you doing? He goes, I was praying. I'm here for you. See, the story is that his wife was on drugs. You know, she threw a crack pipe on the knee. The neighbors called the cops, and so he got locked up. But he said he would always tell me, hey, I'm, I'm innocent, and I didn't believe it. But I saw him there. He's like, I'm praying for you. I said, man, how many Our Fathers did you say? <laughs> He's like, no, I was actually talking to God. He goes, read your Bible. I start reading my Bible. I remember dropping to my knees. Again, no worship team. It was just me reading the Bible and me knowing who I was and me hearing God speak to me here and here and here because all things work together for the goodness of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And so all of those things happen for this point. And now I'm repenting and I'm like, God, I'm sorry for cheating. I'm sorry for being an adulterer. I'm sorry for being a liar. I'm sorry for being a thief. I'm sorry for selling drugs and destroying people's lives. God, I'm sorry. So this is like 45 minutes or an hour venture. I don't even know what the word repentance is. But I knew at some point I had to identify the sin and confess with my mouth that, that God was right. 
Later I find out that all those things are in the Bible. But I just knew I had to, man, this is not right. I just knew it wasn't. At some point you got to realize what kind of father are you, what kind of mother are you. And I'm not just not to beat you up or to condemn you, but, but if you're just in church just to feel good on a Sunday and it's not for your life to be transformed and you're a form of godliness and you're denying the power, then it's to no avail. You will not see everything God has for you. I wound up getting saved. And all of a sudden, I'm in another unit. This kid walks in. He's about 19 years old. His name's Jonathan. And so I go like, whoa. I go, okay. I go, man, let me. What's your name? He goes, my name's Jonathan. I, go, I think of my son, Jonathan. And I'm like, man, it's a real good opportunity to follow this kid. And so I take him under my wing. Later, I would marry his mom, Ruthie. That's how I met Ruthie. I come out. You know, it doesn't stop. There's so many things that I wanted to come out. They made it so hard. You know, I needed to get my license to get a job, but I, I got to take this class before I can get my license, and I can't get the job to get the $114 for the class because I can't get a job because I can't get my license. So everything was so hard. It's like, it's like a puzzle. I'm like Rubik's Cubing in real life. I'm like, ma'am. She's like, do you have the $114? I'm three classes in. I'm like, uh, for $114? She's like, yes, yeah, for the class. I'm like, well, I need to take the class so I could get my license, so I could get a job. So I could have the $114. I could give it to you later. She goes, no, sir, you need the 114 And I said, and I've already spent some of that on Taco Bell when I got out. <laughs> Nobody told me when I was leaving, hey, you need money. <laughs> they give me $100. I don't know what your excuse is. I wind up, you know, I come out, you know, with baby Ruth. It's amazing, but hard at the same time. Because I don't know how to be a husband. I don't know how to be this, that, this, this, this. All these things I got to learn. But I knew one thing, the love of Christ. And I knew that he loved me. And I knew that I wasn't going back. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. Right? That wasn't just a song to me. Like, I sang it, but I was like, yeah, I ain't going back. <laughs> Why? I wanted to be a father. I wanted to be everything Jesus said I could be. And I didn't even know what that was. And so I'm... I come out, I'm so, it's so hard. So hard. I, I don't know how many no's I got. I got a lot of no's. I got a lot of no's on people like, hey, a job, you know. They would always want me to work Sundays. I told one guy because he got me so frustrated and probably not the right thing, a little fleshy. But he got me so frustrated he wouldn't give me the job. I told him I could work six days a week, all and any hours he want, but not Sunday. And so he wouldn't listen to me. So I said, listen, you need me to go to church on Sundays or everybody will be in the cooler, tied up, cash register gone. I mean, I'm high. I'm, I mean, everybody. I said, you want, you know, and the dude's like this. He's like, we'll call you. <laughs> I mean, he just didn't listen. I'm like, please listen to me. I need Jesus. You don't understand. He's a lifeline. Like, I can't do it without him. My kids need me. And so I went on this thing. I got a job, and it was uh, receipts, you know, selling an uh, advertisement on the back of receipts. I could always, she's like an assistant forever. <laughs> it's like, she's like, advertisement. Advertisement on the back of receipts. And so, you know, boom, I I'm walking around trying to sell advertisement. And to those who have excuses for everything, I had a car. It was, they, 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 they gave it to me. That's a whole great story, too. God gave me that, a car, and then, you know, somebody wrecked it. And then Ruthie was like, you think they're going to give me another car? And I said, God's going to give me a car. And then two weeks later, I got another car. But it was always with the heart and the purpose of, of other people. And so I, you don't know how many times I needed a car and I was praying for somebody else to get a car. And, and so in that, I'm walking. I'm parking the Lambo. I called it a Lambo. It had a gray hood, beat up, had no AC, you know. The day I got the money for the AC, I loved Ruthie and her AC broke, so I gave her the money and I was sweating. <laughs> that's, what, you know, that's called love. It has to be. That's what love is. Not all the, oh, hey, hey. it's the, I'm going to sweat for six months so that you could have AC. <laughs> oh, it wasn't easy. Trust me. I, every day that I was hot, I was like, great. I gave her, the, you know, so I complained. 
all that happens. All this is happening, and I'm parking the car, and I'm walking. So let's say, if I, because I was selling receipts, I'd park the car down here, and I'd walk through all these businesses. I'd go all these businesses, all these shopping center, and I'd wind up in Popeyes, and I really couldn't drive the car there, because you're like, why didn't you drive? Because I only had enough gas to get me home. So I'd walk it, sweat, and then realize, okay, next time I do this, I need two shirts. Then I started bringing three shirts, and they were all extra large. So I, I was battling with shame and humility because I was prideful. And I'm like, look how stupid I look. I sold drugs. I used to be fly. Look at me now. <laughs> and all those thoughts and all those thoughts and all those thoughts. But, uh, you know, not having sex with, Ruthie's the first woman I didn't have sex with until I got married. <laughs> Again. Do you understand how hard, look, don't be like, wow, no, no, no. In those seasons, I was like, help me, I'm struggling, help me. But, but the, Jesus was greater than the pain. Do you understand? Jesus has to be greater. I, I, I knew that he had something for me. Think about if we wouldn't make that decision. Some of y'all see this today, but you don't know all those decisions. I used to tell Ruthie, ah, your little demons that you fight with, they're like six foot. Mine's like ten foot five. <laughs> and he slams me around like this, do, do, do. It's like a Rocky movie. I'm just waiting for the song, you know, because I'm getting beat up, and I'm like, so God, turn the song on. <laughs> I start doing the whole Apollo Creed, everything. <laughs> Some of y'all need to get like that. He's placed a new song in your heart. You're not seeing everything God has for you. Show a picture of my family today. Let's see if they on cue. Hadaya. Come on. Jonathan. Listen, listen, listen. This didn't stop here. One day you hear the story. My son was on drugs too. My daughter was on drugs too. So it stops here. And then they start, you know, it's just morphs right by the time they have kids they should be at a greater place that's why you are we're not having a good marriage so that we can have a good marriage so we can be like oh let's post a picture and we're gonna have a good marriage so the world could see no we want to have a good marriage so you could have a good marriage we want to be sober so you could be sober we want to be financially stable so you could be financially stable that's why we do what we do this is jonathan valerie joshua when he thought he was real cool because he used to he used to shake his head like this look Baby Ruth, the handsome, extraordinary, smart, good-looking Puerto Rican Juan Martinez. <laughs> oh, I added a little. I added, added a little. Nina, Jonathan Palomino, and Jay. We're missing a picture with a dog named Max, and he belong, he's there. He's, he's part of our family. And then you guys are totally a part of our family. Do you understand? Is everybody on the same page? When you go home, read Romans 6. I'm telling you, you need to read Romans 6. I'm going to read this, and we'll close with this. I want to read uh, it's a post that I made. And I want you to hear this because I'm totally believing. You know, again, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, when we planted the church, we, we had eight people. And uh, we didn't even, we, we didn't even call it a church plant. We were just like, we're going to have a Bible study. This is what we're going to do. And, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to set people free. We started off, we had two bikes on a picnic table, like four toys, about, you know, a couple bags of food. That's it. And we weren't like, ah, oh, I wish we had 50. No, we were happy with the two bikes. It reads like this. Look at your neighbor and say, it's never too late. Okay, at 36, I got saved. At 40, I married Ruthie. I got on the radio on 100.7 FM back then. Totally see why. It wasn't because I was all good. It wasn't because like, oh, that guy's a professional radio guy. It's because God wanted to isolate me and not have any people in front of me for a long time to break certain things so I wouldn't get, my personality wouldn't get me in trouble when all the people came around. But nevertheless, I was on the radio. At 42, I planned to get wrapped church, and God reunited me with my kids and did complete restoration. Not only did he restore my kids, he gave me three extra kids. He gave me extra grandkids. He gave me extra everything. And I wouldn't have it any other way. At 46, 
I started We Are Havoc and Clothing Brand. At 47, I bought my first home. At 49, I wrote my first book and finally got my passport and started my first podcast. And then we were back on the radio again. And all of these things, obviously, I'm talking about my personal life, but I wouldn't be able to accomplish any of this without a team and without the people that have helped me, especially my wife. At 51, I visited Israel. At 52, I received my doctorate. And I'm also working on two books right now. I just got an email last week to sign with Charisma for my next book. In about four weeks, I'm going to Africa. And this is after 10 years of incarceration and 23 years of addiction. I say all those things because I do I, every single person that's under the sound of my voice I believe God has a plan for you Amen. I believe that we gotta start see the, the, the people are always placing on me like you gotta you know it's the neighborhood and it's the people all the time I hear it all the time trust me just look around and look where everybody's planting I, I know certain people are called certain things but everybody they always say like oh you know if you move down the street 20 minutes if you move over here if you move over there and it's so tempting sometimes I'm being real but that was like, then who? And so maybe you've never had that story. And you're like, you know what? I've never had that testimony. But I believe in reaching the lost. I believe in bringing light to a dark place. Because that's what it's for, right? I never wanted to be the church on the block. I see Love City. It gets so hard to try to raise finances sometimes. So I, I, I need you to believe in what we're doing. Could you imagine the impact we would have? If we have a a place and, and this place was just like this beautiful place land I don't know 20 acres I saw one 4 million in case you're in the building <laughs> right, hey look a place right next to mansions at Turkey Creek where we started the Bible study there's, there's 20 acres there could you imagine <laughs> we moved to the mansions because it said hey he's, I told Ruthie we're moving there she said why I said there's a scripture it said he prepared a mansion for me that's prepared for us <laughs> imagine if the, if, imagine if it was built there and there was like this park where the whole community could come and we could actually be involved in all those kids' lives. Teach fathers how to be fathers and sons how to love fathers who's trying to love and mothers. And imagine we could do that. Imagine if we had like homes in the back, a couple cabins where guys could stay. I could take a guy like Chris or I could take a girl like Jessica. Or I could just people and help them at least get going like maybe they came out of a program or they came out of something and we get them from there to the next place imagine if this city had a bunch of people who had testimonies that weren't afraid to roll up their sleeves and we had 4th of July could you imagine 4th of July big concert right or maybe you know all the families are there it's a safe place it's real beautiful we got extra campuses maybe around the city or extra hangouts. You know, I don't know if you know about Give Rap, but I'm just going to put this out there. You know, something that we've been praying about, we're actually going to have missionaries here in America. That's what Get Rap wants to do. We believe in, in, in helping our communities that are around here. And imagine this place where they're going to have a big World Series baseball game and there's people that maybe don't know Jesus and right before the World Series... Holy, holy. And all the parents, they don't know what's going on. They got bamboozled. Now they're in a worship service. <laughs> and then we give them a five-minute message to try to apprehend their heart. Come on, what if this place had a gym? Just all these things, restaurants, beauty, just hair salons, just everything in that community. And that community would be thriving. And they would say, man... The planet would scratch their head. They say, that dude got out of prison? Because eventually I'm getting older. I mean, I know I look good. <laughs> but I'm getting older. I don't even want to look at my wife right now. She's like, you do look good, babe. You do look good. I am um, generationally, right? 
we're just not we're, if the, this is the I, and I, I, I'm going to be nice but I, I'm going to speak about us I, oh, look if we're not going to go and do the impossible then I, I don't even want to be a pastor just so I could preach my wife I preach to my wife every week she, she likes it I want to flip the city I want, a, I, I want to see, you know, all these things being done around the city. I, I, I want to see, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm dreaming small. Maybe we need an apartment complex. Like, I don't know. And that's only going to happen if we are all in, all of us. Not just one or two or three or not the one that's like, yeah, but don't, you know, don't, you know. I know we don't like to talk about money, but. We, we come in that collectively together. We're stronger together. Greens Point, the last time we did an event there, there was over 5,000 people. We've been doing this for years. It's funny when I see little things and a famous person does something and they're like, oh, wow. I'm like, bro, we've been doing this for 10 years now. Hello, here we are. What if we got together? What if every influence influenced others to influence others and then this became love city? Boom, big old light. Hey, I already see the brick coming in. It's yellow. Why? Beyond the yellow brick road? It's totally different, right? Red carpet in the front. Why? Because you're special. You're covered by the blood. Come on. Wooden signs that say this way to the sanctuary. Okay, I want you to close your eyes for a moment. And I want you to say, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? I'm praying he starts showing you an area of your life that you know has you stuck. And today, you're just going to come to the Lord yourself. Amen. When the Holy Spirit starts speaking to you, I want you to make your way to the front. Don't be ashamed. Don't be shy. If the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart and you're saying, today's going to be the day. I'm not waiting for 2024. And you're like, you know what? I need to come up to the front and I'm going to spend some time with the Lord. I'm sp he's speaking to you this morning. Just feel the tug. Meet me in the front. There you go. Praise the Lord. I love you, brother. I love you. And you're just going to spend some time with the Lord. Maybe you want to kneel down. Maybe you want to close your eyes. Don't let this moment pass by. Maybe there's just this, there's an area of your life. There's, there's just this place in your heart that you've been, you, you haven't read Romans 6. You, you, you haven't died to sin. You, you don't realize that he's already done it for you at the cross. And so you're in this present fight and you're waiting to get to heaven. And he's like, it's all available to you now. It's all available to you now. You could be the mother that you've dreamed, but you don't understand my past. That's irrelevant. Yes, he deals with those things. Yes, he speaks into those things, but you got to stop making the excuse that it's because of this, it's because of that, it's because of this. You have an opportunity today. Because remember, if what you have today is what was sown in the past, then what you'll have tomorrow is what you start sowing today and start taking care of. This isn't just a religious service, right? This isn't just a form. Your pastor, when he preaches to you, he's not just preaching to you something that, oh, Stephen Furtick said it, so it must be. No, it's, it's real and evident. You could choose to believe what I'm telling you. How many of you got a crazy past? Raise your hand real quick. Yeah, beautiful church. God can use us, man. All of us. I'm only one part of this equation. I'm only one part. Heavenly Father. Speak to their hearts. Do what you do best. May they reckon themselves. Come into account. You've already died on the cross for our sins. May they come alive. Put a circle around themselves and say, I'm alive again in Jesus name. my name is Juan Martinez I grew up in Hoboken New Jersey um, one day I would be sitting in a car and um, I believe this was like 2006
I was uh, looking at the clouds, and you know what? As crazy as it sounds, this is the only day that I didn't get high. Now, most of my life, I got high every day, from morning to night, um, just every day. I would be looking up at the clouds, and uh, I would begin to weep. I mean, it wasn't just like a trickle of a tear coming down my face. I mean, it was like an uncontrollable cry. I think the only other time I felt something like this was when I, I felt the Holy Spirit come upon me later. Uh, so it was one of those cries. I had a driver, and I remember the driver freaking out and looking at me like, hey, you know, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? And I remember just crying and crying and crying and crying. And it wasn't like I had never read the Bible. I Never. I had never read the Bible. The only thing I've seen was our Father, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the Father's Prayer. And I remember I, it wasn't like an audible voice, but man, it was close. It was kind of like um, I could feel it set inside me maybe, like my spirit. And it was kind of like, why are you killing, stealing, and destroying the very lives I'm giving people? Later I would find out that that's scripture. And I started to think, man, I, for the first time in my life, I felt like the devil. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but I felt like, wow, like, like I felt like an enemy of God. I felt like, oh my God, what am I doing? And in a twinkling of an eye, stops. Either something happened or I went plum crazy. And I think I'm pretty sane. So, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I look at the person, you know, now the roar, roar, roar turns into, are you okay? <laughs> you know, kind of like, Whew. and I'm like, uh, I go, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. They're like, man, you must have some buzz. And I was like, I go, no, man, I'm sober. And they're like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm going fine. But what would happen next is that when I would get to the place where I was supposed, because I had about eight ounces of meth, and when I would get to the houses where I was going to go deliver the drugs, I would, uh, I would feel kind of like a conviction. Um, because now I know conviction, then I couldn't explain it. But it was kind of like, it was for the first time in my life, I felt bad about what I was doing. It was like, I, I had this, like, like, so they would open the door and now it would be like, you know, I would ha but I still gave it to him because I don't think, I, I didn't have no Jesus. So it was kind of like, you know, here, I felt bad, but eh, you know, let's keep doing this. A few months later, I guess that there was this a person that was like the big guy in the town, and eventually I would pass him up, right? You know, in the ranks of, I guess, the, the underworld, right? And um, what would happen is that he, he t I, I needed a big shipment, and he was gonna connect me. He was gonna connect me with the plug. And so I was gonna go to Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, there, I had a driver then too. Uh, it was a female, and she was driving me. And I said, listen, this is gonna be quick, you know? It's gonna be one, two, three, and uh, we parked the car in a remote area. There's, all I see is one guy out there. I don't see anything else. I don't see a car. I see one guy. Get out of the car. I go over there. I pull out the money. You know, I, I hand him the money. He hands me the meth. turn around for some reason I go to taste it and, it and it wasn't real and so I go to turn around the guy's running at me I grab him by his legs he falls on the ground when I put up my fist uh, to hit the guy I hear I see a guy in a ski mask coming with the with the gun uh, pointed to the to the driver or the girl's head and she begins to walk towards us as he's walking she says don't do it don't do it so I, I kind of lay down and this guy commences to beating on me. I mean, I, I've never been beat like this in my life. This was a beating like none other. I remember laying there thinking that that girl was gonna die and that, you know, I, I um, yeah, every time I picked up my head, uh, they would hit me. Uh, I believe they, st they probably beat me for about 20 minutes uh, before I heard the clack of the gun. Although I'm saying this and I talk really fast, I believe that at that moment it was like the slowest and the longest thing I've ever been through, you know? Um, I felt like um, I heard the clack, 
Um, I, uh, I um, remember thinking, I'm going to die. So I, I, I yelled out, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I, I didn't know how to pray. But before you know it, um, I hear the car drive off. And so the, the gun didn't go off. I don't know. I wholeheartedly believe that that was one of the moments where the Lord really cleaned his ear to me, you know. I, it was a true cry out. I still really didn't uh, know Jesus or anything, but I knew there was a God. And, uh, I felt like I cried out and I looked up and I remember the girl getting up and start screaming, start screaming. I believe my head was about out here. Um, I couldn't even put a hat on. I remember somebody telling me, hey, they're looking for you for aggravated robbery. I said, aggravated robbery? And I said, I don't gonna aggravate, rob nobody. I'm a drug dealer. <laughs> Why would I rob anybody? So I wind up, believe it or not, calling the police department in Breckenridge and I said, hey, I don't, I didn't, I didn't I didn't rob anybody. I hear you guys are looking at me for a rob. I said, I'm all the way in Odessa. They said, all right, New York, you know, you sure you're not here? I said, no, I'm not. Well, somebody had leaked where I usually have this home. So I was coming back and it was right before, I, I had about four grams of meth, uh, but it was right before I made the big pickup. So if they would have caught me after, I probably would have did 90 years. Detective, you know, the guy, I remember they, would, they wanted me to say that I did it, right? So they would sit me down and they would ask me questions. And uh, the amazing thing is that they would say, okay, now you want me to help you, right? And I said, yes, sir. He said, well, tell me what happened. And I would tell them what happened and they would go, now do you want me to help you? And I'd say, yeah, I want you to help me. So you know what they would say? They would look at me and they would say, let's, let's, let's say the truth here. So you were, you were high. You went in the house, you hit him in the head. I said, no, I'm a drug dealer. I didn't do that. I really didn't, you know? So uh, I said, give me a lie detector test. They gave me the lie detector test. The guy was still, he said, listen, I don't, if you want me to help you, you're gonna have to say the truth. I said, man, I know I'm saying the truth. A guy comes out from Breckenridge that knew me, a detective at that time. And he's like, look, he goes, I know you didn't do it, but do you have, do you have the, the proof of the hotel, all that? So all that would be in the works while I'm waiting. Now I'm waiting and I'm waiting in a cell and I would meet a guy that would say he was a pastor and he's in jail, right? And you know how the story goes in jail, everybody's innocent, right? So at the end of the day, he comes in and he's like, he goes, hey, you know, I'm here for you. Well, the next, he, I said, whatever. And I went to my cell, but it made me think the next morning I would look across and he would be in a prostate position uh, for a long time. And so all of a sudden he gets up and so I run to the gate and I go, hey man, what were you doing? He says, I was praying. I said, you was praying? I said, what do you mean you was praying? He said, I was praying. And he said, you need to, you need to, he said, I'm here for you. You need to start reading the Bible. You need to start watching TV. That's what he said. Later I would see that he watched TV. He said, you need to start watching uh, some TV, man. And I said, watch what? And he's like, every morning I go down there and I watch TV and just come down at the same time. Cause we were, I could see him. It's a gate. He's on this side, I'm on this side. He's like, you go down there and you watch it too. So I would go in the cell that night, kind of like still, I didn't even know what TBN was. Um, I, I just, you know, I just knew it was going to be on the TV the next morning. And so um, I started reading my Bible and something happened. Um, can't explain it, I, just kind of like a I began, I, I went down the next morning. He was already down there, he beat me to it. He was watching TBN. I went on my side and I started watching TBN and I'll never forget who it was. It was Jesse Duplantis. Man, and I was like, what is this? And so he, I guess, you know, most people say I'm pretty funny, you know? And so when I, uh, when I looked at him, he was hilarious. And he was just saying all these jokes, and in the midst of his jokes, every now and then, you know, you get the, the little, you know, because he would say the word, and so that would hit you. I, I began, it, it was a process. Day after day, I would watch TBN. Every morning I would go, and now it became, those were like my pastors, right? So I would talk to the guy from across, and we would talk about what TBN was saying, right? I, had, I don't think I had surrendered yet, um, I, I, I believe the importance of watching TBN was, was listening to the word that would be implanted in my heart. It would be the seed, and, uh, they say that the heart is like the womb, right? So it would be the seed that the heart would receive. 
and day after day I would watch and day after day the seed was planted, then it was water and then it was planted, then I would talk to that guy and that guy would nurture it, you know, because he would tell me, I was like, what did he mean by this? And what did he mean by that? And uh, I would continue to read my Bible and then one day, um, it would be months after that, I remember, uh, I remember it being a, a night, it was a night and I remember being in my cell after listening to TVN uh, probably for a few months uh, I would kneel down and I would surrender my life I, I threw my hands up and I, re I remember like like I was like God I don't want to do 25 years I was like I I can't do 25 years um, you know I think that's when uh, when all the toughness leaves you right when you start thinking 25 I said that's my whole life I'm gonna be old I'm gonna get out of here. I was like, give me a chance. Like, I don't, I don't, I think, you know, to be honest, that was probably the first time I, actually it was. It was the first time I ever prayed, uh, like had a conversation with God and spoke with God. Uh, because before that it was only the Our Father. So I was able to, uh, I was talking to him and, uh, and he answered. He answered because months after that, uh, they would give me the charge of over four grams, under 200 grams. Uh, possession uh, of methamphetamines, methamphetamines uh, with uh, the intent to distribute, uh, but they would find out the truth uh, that I didn't do the aggravated robbery, and uh, because of that, um, they winded up uh, giving me four years. So I did uh, a year in county, about two years in uh, TDCJ, uh, and I would um, uh, I got out, and I had a year parole. Uh, when I got out, it was amazing. Uh, it was just unbelievable. I, I, uh, I got out of, uh, you know, Jonah got out of the mouth of the whale. I got out of the mouth of the jail and I began to run. And it wasn't to Nineveh. I, I, for me, it was like, you read it, you do it. You read it, you do it. And I, 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 I just seen these guys doing amazing things on TBN and talking about all the lives that were changing. So I, I, all those seeds that were planted in me uh, from TBN, and from the guy, if I did not meet that guy, uh, you know, so I don't know who I'm talking to today, but maybe there's somebody you need to tell that you watch it and you're keep holding it back like it's the best kept secret. Well, maybe you need to tell somebody uh, because that guy telling me that I needed to watch TBN and go there morning after morning and day after day um, changed my life. Um, it, it put me in the right course. It changed me in the right, put me in the right direction. Uh, it showed me what I needed to do. Thank you so much for watching. You know, when I go into the prisons a lot of times, I tell the guys, you know, when you leave out the door, you think you're actually going to be free. But you were incarcerated before you got incarcerated because of the way you think. So now, our goal is to introduce you to the one that sets the captives free to help you develop an intimate relationship with God. I just want to welcome you and thank you for being part of the Get Rap family.